So it's been a little over a year now since my bank account was hacked and I first started using 1Password to secure myself online. And if that's happened to you before, you know just how terrible and invasive it feels to be hacked. Well, I've been using the software daily over the past year. And in this review, I wanna share with you the things that I like and I don't like about 1Password, give you a quick look at the desktop and the mobile apps, and finish by discussing the security risks involved. Hi, I'm Josh, and if you're new to this channel, I'm a huge advocate for personal online security. Now, you're obviously in the market for a password manager app, and 1Password is one of a handful of different companies that have a good reputation in this market. Now, if you've never used a password manager before, 1Password is like every other piece of software in that it helps you create strong, excellent passwords. It stores those passwords in a secure vault behind a single master password. It syncs that vault between different devices, whether that's your computer, your tablet, or your phone. And finally, it monitors the health of your password profile. That's what it does. However, every password manager takes a different approach in how it accomplishes this. I'm gonna explain a few features that I like and don't like about 1Password, but if you'd rather jump ahead to the tour of the software, you can do so using the time marker you see here. Let's start with one of my favorite features of 1Password, the family plan. What this means is that my family plan covers all members of my family, which could include my parents, my wife, my sister, my kids, any other immediate family members. We can each have our own private vault and then share a family vault. The shared vault could store passwords we might use such as Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. Another unique feature of 1Password is something known as travel mode. Now for those of you who travel internationally, this could be something useful for you. You have the ability to go in and mark certain vaults as safe for travel. It then removes those vaults from my devices that might be extra sensitive while I'm traveling. And when I return, I can reinstall those vaults. This gives me confidence that my data can't be compromised, even if I'm forced to unlock my device, which I have been forced to do while traveling internationally before. And finally, I wanna point out the Watchtower feature in 1Password. Most password managers have a similar feature, but I really like how 1Password has developed Watchtower. This is something that helps you monitor the health of your password. It tells you if you have weak passwords, it tells you if you have duplicated passwords, it tells you if there are certain logins that allow you to have two-factor authentication that you may or may not be using. Using. And best of all, Watchtower monitors external breaches to let you know if any of your current logins have been compromised in any way and need to be changed. So for example, the US department store Target had a data breach a few years ago. Well, Watchtower notified users that the Target information had been compromised and they needed to change their passwords. Now, there are two things that I wish I could change about 1Password that I'll share with you here. First, I wish there was a free version of 1Password, similar to how Dashlane offers a limited but still free version. Now, 1Password does have a 30-day free trial, but it's not the same, and I think it could be done better. Secondly, I wish that I had the option to purchase the software and maybe even future upgrades later instead of having to be forced into a subscription model. I know many people who would much rather store their password vault locally on their computer as opposed to passing it on to the 1Password servers. Now, 1Password does offer this as an advanced feature option to store it locally, but you still have to pay for the subscription service. This was a business decision that was obviously made with profits in mind and not the end user. Okay, before we cover the important security features, let me give you a quick tour of the software, both on desktop and mobile. On my computer, I've installed both the app and the browser extension for Firefox, which I use instead of Chrome for security reasons. Now, I'm gonna show you both, but to be honest, I use the browser extension a whole lot more than I do the actual app. So we'll start with the app. Obviously, I'm going to have to put in my master password to get in, but once we do, I've got access to my private vault and the shared vault that you see here. So the private vault is the one that's specifically for me and the shared ones, the one that I share with my wife and any other family members. So within this vault, you've got your favorites here on the left. You've got your watchtower, which we'll walk through, which uh, we've already walked through, I should say. Um, and then different categories where I've got logins. I keep secure notes. Uh, if I had any credit cards, which I don't put any credit cards in my one password account, uh, identities, any documents, and then passports. Um, I keep all the passport information for our family in here as well. Now, um, when, you when you look in at the different preferences, um, what you'll see here is that you've got your general preferences to show one password in the menu bar and different keyboard shortcuts. Um, there's, um, you can open one password to suggestions, um, but really the, the importance that you need to think about with the preferences is the security. Do you wanna allow the touch ID, which I do. I like being able to use my touch ID uh, for my laptop and I like using face ID for my mobile devices. Do you wanna conceal your password 
passwords. Yes. Auto lock and how long we lock for. Um, we've got, I've only got one account. Um, how I set up my watchtower. Um, I do check for two factor authentication because I do like to use it. Um, you can check for vulnerable passwords. You can ask before checking for a secure connection. And then of course, all the different, um, things related to the vaults. Always open all the vaults, or I can just open the private vault um, if I wanted to, and then which is the default. My default is I'm always going to save to my private vault unless I say otherwise. Um, the browser, I like using the browser, as I said before. I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, and then how do we check for updates? And I like to automatically check and use the updates. And the advanced features, this is something that allows you to um, put your local vault here on your computer so that you're not necessarily syncing it to the one password servers. Um, um, you can, for the sorting, you can show numbers and numbers and symbols first. Um, these are, some of these are just, I don't necessarily call them advanced. I would say that they're mostly unnecessary unless you are specifically wanting to do something uh, in integrating a third party app, for, for example. But most of the time, like I said, this is not an app that I open up and use. What I would normally use would be Firefox. So I'm going to open up Firefox. Let's say I want to get into Trello. So I'm going to open up Trello and I'm going to log in. Now I already have, if you see right here, this is my, um, I've already unlocked it, but this is my browser extension up here that's in Firefox. So what's going to happen is when I click on the email, it's going to give me one that I can automatically autofill. And when I click that, it's going to autofill it with the password and the, um, and the email address. And then I can just log in on the flip side. I can also use the one password browser extension to create a password here. So if I was creating a password for this test account in Trello, I could actually go in and say generate a password and then it would generate that and automatically prompt me to save that in my private um, or I could save it in my shared vault. It's really up to me. Well, the mobile app works very similar to the extension and that it mostly works in the background. Once I've set it up, when I want to log into an account, I just click on this password and it uses either my password, my master password, which I have to type in, or biometric ID, which could be my face ID to autofill the password. Now let's open up the actual app on my iPad so you can see what that looks like. Okay, we're going to start by launching the one password app, which uses my face ID to open and verify my identity. You can go into the settings and security if you'd like advanced security and change that to be a pin code if you'd like and so that you're not using biometric data to do that. Now, as you saw here within the categories, we've got space for logins, secure notes, identities, documents, passports, all the stuff that you had in the desktop app and it looks exactly the same. You can still sort it by tags and favorites and then in the settings, you've got a lot of different options um, for security, when you can lock on exit, how many minutes before it auto locks, whether you can use face ID, whether watchtower is enabled, um, autofill, you can use it with Apple watch, but it has to be on an iPhone, not an iPad. I don't have an Apple watch, so it doesn't really matter. And then of course you have advanced features where you can import a vault, uh, allow custom keyboards, or as I showed you a few extra security features. Okay. I'd like to shift focus to address the concerns that most people have about trusting all of their most sensitive password data to one company and one password, security. While 1Password has a number of security features that work in the background while you're browsing the internet and most of the time you won't even know that you're being protected from a threat, the most important thing that most people want to talk about is the encryption of their password vault. The best way that I can explain this is that 1Password has designed three layers of protection. The first layer is your master password, which gets you access to your vault. Only you know this, so theoretically, 1Password can't access your vault even though it's on their servers. But the second is a security key that is stored on each device that is set up as a trusted device with 1Password. It's almost like a second master password that only your device knows and both passwords have to be present in order to unlock the vault. You know in those movies where the two keys have to be inserted and turned in order to verify a missile launch? Well, it's the same here. Both you and your device have to provide these secret keys and master password in order to verify and unlock the vault. The final layer of security is what 1Password calls secure remote password, which is just a complicated way of saying that they encrypt the data between your device and the 1Password servers. All of this is designed to make you feel secure about using 1Password and storing all of your passwords in their vault. And they've done a good job. But there's nothing you can do to convince me that a piece of software or an encryption is hack proof. You can call me paranoid. 
I don't care. I will never put all of my eggs in one security basket. And that's why I add an extra layer of protection in the form of a double blind password. Now I've gone into a deep explanation of that in this video that I highly recommend you watch, but the short version is that even if somebody were to hack into my 1Password vault, the passwords that are there are not my actual passwords. They don't work. All right, so final verdict time. Is 1Password really a great password manager app? I've been using it religiously over the past year, and I can honestly say that I think it is. If you're still writing down your passwords or repeating the same passwords for multiple logins, do yourself a favor and just try 1Password for 30 days. I have links in the description below. They are affiliate links, but it's a good thing to try and it's worth the effort. Passwords are the key to our digital front door, and it might be time that you upgrade your lock. Thanks for watching. Please like this 1Password review, subscribe to the All Things Secure channel, and if you have questions about 1Password, I encourage you to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer every single one of them. 